Radha Kundam Devaramaho Radhika Madhava Sham Prapto Yasa Pasita Kripaya Shri Guru Nitamantas Andeham Shri Guru Shri Atastara Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shashi Rupam Sadhajatam Sahagana Sahagana <coughs> 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 Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <coughs> Hare Krishna, I'm going to speak about leadership and fall down within the context of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, founded by His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Fall down is a term that Srila Prabhupada used. Uh, downfall would be more correct English usage, you could say. Uh, fall down, by that Srila Prabhupada meant <coughs> Falling down from one spiritual standing, one spiritual position. At the present time, Srila Prabhupada Jiskon is in a highly divided state with much bad feeling in the air. And there's been a lot of shock and disappointment, disgust, and lack of faith due to revelations about misconduct of some leaders. It may be that such an outpouring of outrage was because the proverbial straw on the camel's back was more than a straw, the things that were going on, but there's been a lot of discontent for quite some time, as I have been pointing out over the years. I'm trying to present some angles here which are likely to get pummeled and punched out. And we used to get arrested in England in the 1970s when we were distributing books and the police would say, anything you say may be used in evidence against you. So, trying to talk on these topics at all, everything you say will be used in evidence against you. So, I'm trying to speak here to anyone who may care to listen in a uh, cool-headed manner, somewhat detached manner, although Undoubtedly, some of the things that have been going on are subjects for anger. Uh, by dis even by discussing these topics, I'm likely to become the subject of more anger and might lose some friends might lose some disciples. It's happened to me before, speaking on certain issues. Maybe I should just shut up. <laughs> but also, many appreciate that I'm trying to speak on these topics in a 
Detached manner, uh, detached in the sense that I'm just trying to see what is the best for the movement. Uh, and I also have to speak because I have my own conscience to answer to. I apologize in advance to various devotees and various parties, knowing that it's hardly possible to discuss certain topics at the present time without upsetting someone, because so many are so upset over so many things. If you don't know what I'm talking about, maybe you're lucky, and you didn't listen to the rest of the talk, but probably most of our devotees are at least aware of some bad things have come out, some revelations, this, this, that, that. <clears throat> These are troubled times in Iskon, as in the broader world beyond. Kali Yoga is always getting worse, and we're surprised how bad things can get, just getting worse and worse and worse. But we in ISKCON, we're making history by pushing on the Krishna Consciousness Movement. And maybe we're making mistakes in doing so. Maybe we're making some major mistakes. But as long as we are keeping on the path of the Mahajanas, then despite mistakes, by their mercy, by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada and the great devotees, we will go on. And there will be problems. It's not, we can make all kinds of systems and checks and balances, and we should do, but we can't legislate the nature of the material world into non-existence. Yeah, the lizard agrees. Of course, my perspective is what will be considered by many to be right-wing. <coughs> Recently, a senior and respected sannyasi godbrother of mine, if there's anyone who's respected at all in these disrespectful days, a senior and respected sannyasi godbrother of mine said to me that, that <coughs> I am right-wing, but you are far, far right-wing. And my response is, well, I don't consider myself like that. I'm just trying to do what I think Srila Prabhupada wanted me to do, do what Srila Prabhupada said. Short, this was in Mayapur, shortly before this in Mayapur, a god-nephew of mine came to see me, with whom I have a long-standing relationship, and <clears throat> He had been in the forefront of a very polemic writings and activities uh, against this basic stance that I've been standing up for. So he came to see me and uh, gave me a gift, a nice gift of a Murti of Srila Prabhupada, and we talked cordially, and just after a few minutes, I, I said to him, well, you seem to be very quiet in these polemic issues, and he, recently, and he said, yeah, I, I wrote a long paper about it, and it summarized what I felt I had to say, and uh, I, I don't feel like it's worth me saying anything more. I said everything I had to say. I feel that's what Prabhupada wanted. And I laughed and said, well, that's what everyone thinks. We yeah. all think we're doing what Srila Prabhupada wanted. Devotees have strong feelings on issues, which is maybe good, better than being, don't give a damn, whatever, everything's okay, I'm okay, you're okay. It's good to distinguish reality from illusion, if we're actually distinguishing reality from illusion, and not promoting illusion in the name of reality, we should try to distinguish reality from illusion, uh, as we can do, being given the gift of knowledge given by Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. Even if we do so imperfectly, we should make that endeavor. It's better than being zombies or impersonalists. 
Srila uh, Prabhupada and all the Acharyas, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, they certainly have very strong feelings. But in general, our strong feelings, we want to direct them toward Krishna, to have strong loving feelings for Krishna. More than negative feelings about anything else or anyone else who we don't agree with. Certain revelations came out of, about one sannyasi within ISKCON. Revelations, maybe. It's hard to know the actual facts because there are so many different reports are coming out. <clears throat> And in all such scenarios, what we find is that it's, yeah, it's hard to know the actual facts because people take positions on issues and according to the position one is on, one tends to overstate anything which <clears throat> might support that position and understate anything which is present, which is a fact or possible fact, I understate anything which undermines that position. We may tend to overstate or exaggerate, or if we're on the other hand, the, the, the damning evidence, we may deny it or understate it. So on one side, we're trying to make it out to be as bad as possible, and on the other side, we try and say, well, it's not true. Or it's misunderstood, or it's misinterpreted, uh, or it's, it's not as bad as and, and both sides. One, it's 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 more like vociferous propaganda establishes the truth, or the, whoever shouts the loudest that becomes accepted as the fact. And you have two parties formed which bitterly oppose each other, and. and it's, a, it's more like a propaganda war than, than dispassionately trying to understand what actually happened and looking at problems, seeing how we can solve them in future. Uh, it's like in the broader world. We have fake news and then spin doctors. Perception. It's shaping people's perception rather than trying to see what is the actual f fact and how it should be understood according to Guru, Sadhu and Shastra. It's shaping perceptions. And that's why we get different, different takes on the same events. I'm talking about leadership um, and fall down. Uh, Leaders are required in human society with all due disrespect to Marx and Engels and their followers. Uh, all men are not equal. All women are not equal. All alphabets are not equal. You're never going to get two people who are equal in all respects. Sannyasis are looked up to, or supposed to be looked up to, within ISKCON as the spiritual leaders. Uh, it's a Varnashram placing, placement, in which the sannyasis are supposed to be the gurus of all Varnas and ashrams, including other Brahmanas. And if the sannyasis actually act as sannyasis do, it's a tremendous asset to the Vaishnava society. But on the other hand, if they don't, they be, can become a great liability. In this regard, I think of Queen Elizabeth II, who recently passed away after a long reign as the constitutional Queen of England <clears throat> with no direct power. Uh, but she was a figurehead. And because she did what she was supposed to do, ideally, she was a great asset for the United Kingdom, both internally and externally. Internally, it helped to uh, solidify the British people's feeling of we're all here together as Brits, 
and she she was representative of a whole concept of what it means to be British. I'm not talking about whether it's good or bad here. I'm just trying to state how I see her role. And externally also, Britain, Britain's prestige was upheld in the minds of people throughout the world. The, the royalty going back so many years, and the Queen is an ideal example of this and this and that. So she, she didn't make any slips, maybe a little bit here and there, but overall she's remembered as one who really played her role very well. If she had been different, it would have brought down the prestige of the United Kingdom, but she did play her role well, and therefore uh, whatever prestige the United Kingdom might have, she held to keep that up. So in the same way, sannyasis, uh, of course, they're supposed to be much more than figureheads, but the same point is there. If they, if they actually behave as sannyasis, that will inspire faith in those who look up to them, both inside ISKCON and from outside, that ISKCON is a uh, relevant, uh, respectable, religious institution, but if sannyasis misbehave, it's chaotic and cause so much damage, uh, so much preaching is done, and then people just lose faith. In Ireland, there's such a solid Catholic country for so many years, but there may have been other factors also, but the the revelations of the massive child abuse within the Catholic Church and the cover-ups and the whole, just in a few years, Ireland went from being solidly Catholic to uh, so anti-Catholic that there were two referendums there, one legalizing homosexuality and the other legalizing abortion, which as long as the influence of the Catholic Church was strong, there could not have been. Those two referendums were symbolic of the rejection, the widespread rejection of the younger people, especially of Ireland, who constitute much of the population of the Catholic Church. Although the Church is making a comeback, it's, it's had some terrible... Uh, Terrible losses, but after all, many people feel the need for spirituality, and then and another generation is coming up, and they they think, well, it's not so fresh. Even the generation that lived through it, it's not so fresh in their mind the terrible things that happened, and so the Catholic Church is slowly making a comeback. So this Krishna conscious movement will never be fully shattered by any means. It will go on, for sure. It's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's wish. But we can, uh, by our misbehavior, I, I suppose when I say we, I'm talking about members of ISKCON generically, and especially sannyasis, we, we can do a lot of damage as well as a lot of harm. I'm going to read from... Srila Prabhupada's presentation of the instructions from this chapter that Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sahasrai Thakur gives at the end of chapter 2 of the Antilila of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita regarding Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's rejection of Chota Haridas, which we read it again and again and we wonder as did the devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at that time wondered, what was the great fault of Haridas? What did he do wrong? From the text itself, it doesn't appear that he did anything wrong. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu detected that Haridas had some lustful feelings toward a woman, and then he completely rejected Haridas. Of course, the devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't reject Haridas. They, but 
It's, it's a sad story and difficult one to understand. Bhakti Stansasvara Thakur has given some lessons which we can understand from this. That Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wasn't, of course he wasn't acting whimsically. What are the teachings that we can understand from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's rejection of Chota Haridas for an apparently very small infringement of the codes of conduct of renunciants. And number one, although Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is an incarnation of mercy, he nevertheless gave up the company of one of his personal associates, namely Junya Haridas, Chota Haridas. For if he had not done so, pseudo-devotees would have taken advantage of Junya Haridas's fault by using it as an excuse to live as devotees and at the same time have illicit sexual connections. Such activities would have demoralized the cult of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and as a result, devotees would surely have gone to a hellish life in the name of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So that's the point. If we say, well, sannyasi had some fall down, but anyway, doesn't matter. And then, in the future, devotees will say, yeah, well, you know, I ran off with someone's wife, but, you know, it's okay, it doesn't matter. Krishna is merciful. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tolerated Chota Haidas. He didn't tolerate. <laughs> Two, by chastising Junior Haridas, the Lord set the standard for our charyas, or the heads of institutions, propagating the Chaitanya cult and for all actual devotees. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to maintain the highest standard. It's very, very strict in this regard. <clears throat> Three, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed that a pure devotee should be simple and free from sinful activities. For thus one can be his bona fide servant. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught his followers how to observe the renounced order strictly. Now, if the renounced order is not strict, then it's not the renounced order. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught the standard. We're going to have to come to that standard if we're going to join the dancing party of, Jai, of Sachinanda Nagora Hari. We're practicing here. We have to come up to the standard. Number four, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to prove that his devotees are exalted and their character is ideal. He kindly accepts his faithful devotees and teaches them how much tribulation and disturbance can be produced by even a slight deviation from the strict principles of devotional life. We should have this framed and put on every door in every Iskana ashram. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepts his faithful devotees and teaches them how much tribulation and disturbance can be produced by even a slight deviation from the strict principles of devotional life. We hear a lot about how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Srila Prabhupada are very liberal and very merciful, but the liberality and mercy doesn't mean that th there's no strictness. There's strictness, yes, and lenience, yes. Devotees, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to prove that his devotees are exalted and their character is ideal. Number five, by chastising Junior Harida, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu exhibited his mercy toward him thus showing how elevated was Junior Haridasa's devotion for him. Because of this transcendental relationship, the Lord corrected even a slight offense committed by his pure devotee. Therefore, one who wants to be a pure devotee of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu should give up all material sense gratification, otherwise the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are very difficult to attain. Yeah, we see the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in chastising his devotee. And by chastising Junior Haridas, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu exhibited how exalted was 
Chota Haridas's devotion because after that Chota Haridas he he felt so distraught and he didn't say well Chaitanya Mahaprabhu doesn't have anything to do with me he doesn't want to have anything to do with me I want to have anything to do with him and you know, the hell with him but no he just felt life with Sava Kripa Bina Shokali Nirasha without the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he felt everything was just hopeless he felt like this for one year, he was simply lamenting, hoping for the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then he went to drown himself in the Triveni. So the point, if one should give up all, one who wants to be a pure devotee of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu should give up all material sense gratification, otherwise the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are very difficult to attain. We should read Srila Prabhupada's books. We'll read things like this will help to keep us on track. Otherwise, we're going to be in trouble. Number six, if one dies in such a celebrated holy place as Prayag, Mathura, or Vrindavan, one can be relieved of the reactions to sinful life and then attain the shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Seven, although a pure or faithful devotee may fall down, he nevertheless ultimately gets the chance to go back home, back to Godhead, by the mercy of the Lord. So fall downs will be there, but if one remains pure or faithful, remains faithful, then Shibram Bhavati Dharmatma, he will quickly become properly situated. So where do we go with all of this? I, I know myself, as probably many others, raised in the Roman Catholic Church, before all these, this is quite maybe two decades I'm talking about, before these revelations of massive child abuse within the Catholic Church came out, I was turned off by the misbehavior of the priests. It was a major factor in my disenchantment with Christianity, but it wasn't gross misbehavior. I just didn't see that there were such very exalted people. One of the I, I was an altar boy, uh, it means an assistant to the priest, and there was, I, there was nothing like misbehavior with me or any such thing. But one of the priests was yeah, a nice guy, but he was a chain smoker, and that was very unimpressive to me. And that they both seemed to watch a lot of television. The other, the other parish priest, he, he didn't seem to be such a nice guy. He just he was a little harsh, I found him. Otherwise, nothing in his character that was bad. But it, it, it turned me off. And then the priests, sorry, the, the teachers in the Catholic school I went to who were, who were robustly Catholic, but uh, I didn't see that. They'd get unnecessarily angry with the students and this and that. And I just thought, if you're going to be a person of God, it should make you better than others, and I just didn't see that. Unfort unfortunately, I now see the same in Iskon. Oh, then also Srila Prabhupada, he, was, he would cite as an example of the poor condition of Christianity that a hospital was open, open in America for rehabilitating alcoholic priests, something like that, 500 beds or something, and immediately it's full. And Srila Prabhupada pointed that out as a sign of the spiritual sickness of Christianity, but we can't toot our horn that much in Iskon now that we're so much better, because we're having our own share of misbehavior by spiritual leaders. The Roman Catholic Church may be thought that, when I say that, I mean the leaders of the church probably thought that the faith in the church and in the priesthood was strong enough that people would forgive the abuse, but to a large extent they didn't. It was, that was a watershed for many, many members of the Catholic Church, and they lost their prestige, they lost so many members. But we live in a bad age. 
His sexual stimulation is there everywhere from a very young age, although in traditional societies uh, the sex impulse was kept under control by socially mandated behavior, the way men and women interacted, uh, the way they dressed, Nowadays, that's a, not only is that gone, pornography is everywhere, it's even just in advertising, pretty women smiling at you here, the, uh, from billboards, from your computer screen. Sexual stimulation is everywhere from the earliest age. The broken family, we used to talk about the scourge of broken families, but there aren't even family. So many children grow up in the West the advanced West, without it. They don't have what we would call a traditional family. And what, what is the traditional family is no longer legally a family. A family means what? It means the nuclear family means husband, wife, and children. But husband means male, and the, the, the wife means female, but all these things are under attack. And children grow up with abusive parents, uh, that's not uncommon in India also, but the uh, drunken parents, uh, men beating the wife, uh, or not drunk even, and the children beating severely, or sexual abuse. It, it, you can't say it doesn't go on. It does. Drug addicted or mentally unstable parents, only one parent. I'm not making excuses for what's going on in this school or what has been going on. Uh, what transpired should not have happened. But I'm just pointing out that we do live in a bad age and even people who, who come to this movement, I believe that although others may say differently, I believe that those who came to this movement, they came with, with a serious intention to be Krishna conscious. Not that they entered this movement to try and get some position, to try to exploit others. That seems to me a very untenable proposition. We, we shouldn't just throw them out of their totally insincere, they, they only came to perpetrate abuse on others, no, I, I, I kind of, it, it doesn't make any sense. Here's a quotation from Srila Prabhupada's purport to Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 16, text 1. Srila Prabhupada is quoting a verse which appears in Chaitanya Chandra Dai, Nartak, and in Chaitanya Charitamrita. <clears throat> Lord Chaitanya said, for a sannyasi or anyone who is aspi aspiring to get out of the clutches of material nature, and trying to elevate himself to the spiritual nature and go back home, back to Godhead for him, looking toward material possessions and women for sense gratification, not even enjoying them, but just looking toward them with such a propensity, is so condemned that he had better commit suicide before experiencing such illicit desires. Whew. So even to desire sexual enjoyment, for a sannyasi especially, so much condemned by Lord Chaitanya. <clears throat> From Srila Prabhupada's purport to Bhagavatam, Canto 2, chapter 6, text 20, sex life in the renounced order of life is the most perverted form of religious life and such a misguided person can only be saved if by chance he meets a pure devotee. Otherwise, one should not accept the sannyas order. If one accepts sannyas at an immature stage, there is every possibility of his being attracted by women and lusty desires and thus again becoming a so-called krihasta or a victim of women. Such a person is most shameless and he is called bantashi or one who eats that which he has already vomited. He certainly leads a condemned life. In our Krishna consciousness movement, it is advised, therefore, that the, that the sannyasis and brahmacharis keep strictly aloof from the association of women. 
so that there will be no chance of their falling down again as victims of lusty desires. <coughs> if we analyze this purport, when one is no longer disturbed, especially by lusty desires for sex indulgence, he is fit to become a sannyasi. But then Srila Prabhupada recommends that the sannyasis and brahmacharis keep aloof from the association of women. So, the idea is that one will not be disturbed if he follows the rules of sannyas, which is not to associate intimately with women, not to mix up with them very much. So, it may seem from the beginning of this statement that one has to be completely pure to be a sannyasi. But if one is completely pure, then there's no real need to take sannyas because he's already a paramahamsa. Uh, so the idea is, well, this is clarified more in another quote which I'm reading from Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 2, Text 12, Srila Prabhupada's purport. One who has sex desire still with him should not at all try to accept the renounced order of life should not at all try to accept the renounced order of life. For one who has not attained to this stage, there is no question of a renounced order of life. So by the gradual process of devotional service under the guidance of a proper spiritual master and following the principles of the Bhagavatam, one must be able at least to control the gross sex desire before one accepts the renounced order of life factually. So there's the, the standard, one who has a tall sex desire, don't even think of being a sannyasi, but then at least to be able to control the gross sex desire. Desires may come, but one should be confident of controlling. And then again we see, by strictly aloof from the association of women, on the other hand, we can't be completely aloof because... As you may have noticed, there are many women in the world, and sannyasi is meant to be a preacher, which means he has to move in the world. But there should be a code of conduct for sannyasis. In fact, there, there already is. It's there in the shastras, and it should be followed. <laughs> the real thing is for sannyasis to follow the rules of sannyas. Simple thing. Matra svasra tu hitrava navi viktasano bhavet lalavan indriya gramo vidvam shapi karshati. The rule is there, not only for sannyasis. One should not sit closely, physically close to one's mother, sister, or daughter because the senses are so strong that even someone who's very learned, and in Vedic culture, learned means learned in Shastra, which means you have, to, you, have, you have to have good conduct even to be accepted in the university of the Gurukul, the place of the spiritual master. So even, even someone who's highly elevated in knowledge can become disturbed. Vidvang Samapi Karshati. Even the learned person can be disturbed by mother, sister, or daughter. Seems impossible, but the warning is there. Failure to follow the rules of sannyas, th this particular point, one should not become intimately associated with women. If you fail to follow it, you're going to get into trouble. You might get away with it once or twice. Maybe even more, and then think, well, it's okay, I'm doing okay, I'm, I'm meeting the same woman every day, talking to her every day, a little joke here and there. I'm doing okay, no problem. But sooner or later, Maya is going to catch up. Caesar's wife should be above suspicion. Srila Prabhupada quoted that. That's another consideration that even if there's nothing going on, there, we're, we're, the very fact that a sannyasi is again and again talking with the same woman or talking, with, being surrounded by women, 
it's going to cause gossip. Maybe 20 or more years ago, one of my sannyasi godbrothers, there was a complaint about him from one of my god sisters, one of our god sisters. She said he, that he had been in the room alone with her and he had inappropriately touched her. As is expected, he denied it and it didn't go any further because the sannyasi's word is taken over that of the accuser. But the real thing is he should not have been in the room alone with her at all. Then such an accusation couldn't have arisen. This matra svasa duhidrava verse, don't be close with even your mother, sister or daughter. Uh, this is exemplified in an anecdote which was told to me by Rasaraj Prabhu, uh, who is from a Brahmin family from South India, where still, even now, the culture is kept up to some good extent in the Brahmin families of South India. So he told me that he saw his father. His father would sit in the study upstairs and Rasaraj's sister would daily bring his father a cup of coffee at a certain time every day. And one day, the father said to the sister, how old are you now? And she said, I, something, 13, 14, like this. In other words, she was becoming a young woman and not just a, a, an undeveloped girl. And Rasaraj's father said, so tell your mother that from tomorrow she should bring the coffee. instructive. Here's an anecdote told by another godbrother who's passed away, Pita Prabhu, Pita Das. This is from the uh, Srila Prabhupada Memories video series by Siddhanta Prabhu. That Srila Prabhupada, when he was lying on the bed in Vrindavan in the last weeks and months before his passing away. Pita Prabhu was there for the last few weeks. And Pita Prabhu related that even though Srila Prabhupada was over 80 years old, he didn't allow his female disciples to come in. Others were coming, men were coming in the room regularly. During Kirtan, Srila Prabhupada wanted devotees with him all the time, but he didn't allow female disciples to come in. Maybe Daivi Shakti Mataji came for cleaning, I don't know. But as a general rule, he didn't want that because he didn't want criticism of the sannyas ashram. His body, Srila Prabhupada's body, was completely devastated, Pita Prabhu said. He was, he was old, he was a Paramahamsa devotee, he still followed very strictly the rules of sannyas, and he said that his female disciples could stand at the window near his bed and see him, and maybe, I don't think they could hear him from there, but they weren't allowed in the room. That's what he related. That's how strict Srila Prabhupada was, Pita said. That was his standard. He is the Acharya. It's also related how Srila Prabhupada, both he and his sister were old, but he wouldn't sit in the room alone with her. He would call a male disciple to be with him. That's the standard which Srila Prabhupada said. He didn't need to. We may think, well, I don't need to, I'm okay. I... But Srila Prabhupada said the standard. When he, didn't, he really didn't need to do all those things, but he said the standard. So we need to protect our sannyasis, a very valuable asset to our movement, by implementing, implementing Varnashram Dharma standards. We should presume that they're sincere, not presume they're insincere, but, this, but it's just what we have. Sincerity may not be enough to carry us through, because Maya attacks. Preksha Patnika Vritti. We're in Maya, we're all covered by Maya. Avranatnika Maya covers us, just covers us. But when we try to come out of Maya, Prakshepa, she throws us back. So those who are trying to come out, Maya come, 
the more we try to get out of Maya, the Maya, more Maya pushes back. Therefore, we have to surrender to Krishna. Kshurasya dhara nishita durat jaya. Spiritual life is like a razor's edge, and the Varnashram rules are there to help us stay steady on the path. It is the duty of the disciples, assistants, and servants, and other devotees around the spiritual master, sannyasis, to ensure that the sannyasi or spiritual master is not put in a position where he's alone with a girl or a woman, or not put into some position that will be misinterpreted, as far as possible. Recently, I was visiting someone's house, and it's a couple of young girls, maybe 12 years old, they, they wouldn't have a photo taken with me, so they stood in front of me. I didn't think about it. Then someone went to take a photo. And I was surrounded by so many other people. And I didn't think twice about it, but a servant of mine came and stood next to me. So that I, Because in the photo, I would have seen that I was just standing with two young girls, like 12 years old, 11, something like that. He, he said, if you don't do it, if I didn't do this, then someone may criticize. So disciples shouldn't be naive. They should also, especially those who are regularly in contact with the Guru. Otherwise, uh, there will be criticism. Here's a quote from Srila Prabhupada's purport to Bhagavatam, Canto 3, chapter 24, text 35. In this age of Kali Yuga, sannyas is prohibited because persons in this age are all shudras and cannot follow the rules and regulations of sannyas life. It is very commonly find that, found that so-called sannyasis are addicted to nonsense, even to having private relationships with women. This is the abominable situation in this age. Although they dress themselves as sannyasis, they still cannot free themselves from the four principles of sinful life, namely illicit sex life, meat-eating, intoxication, and gambling. Since they are not freed from these four principles, they are cheating the public by posing as swamis. In Kali Yuga, the injunction is that no one should, should accept sannyas. Of course, those who actually follow the rules and regulations must take sannyas. Well, we shouldn't think that all these heavy statements are just made for sannyasis outside this scope. Not following the principles, then cheating the public, those who actually follow the rules and regulations must take sannyas. We'll discuss this more, Krishna willing, tomorrow. Vancha kalpa tarupyascha kipa sindhu vyavacha patitanam pavanebhya vaishnava vyavacha Dante nitaya chunakam padiyani patta kudvacha karkushatam etat aham bravim he sadhava sakala eva vihaya virad garanga chandra charane kuritanu rada parivadatu jano yata tata va nanumakarona vayam vicharyamaha Hari Rasa Madhura Madhati Matta Bhuvi Vilutama Nathama Nirvishama